Keyboards. They've been the same for a really long time. You clickety-clack on the keys, it puts the text on the screen, everybody's happy. So why not just go with the five, ten dollar keyboard and be done? Well, you can, and it will do the same things that most keyboards will do, but there are reasons why people pay a premium for a good keyboard. First, we spend so much time on our keyboards now. This is the primary way we interface with our computers. So having a keyboard that is kind of junky, clunky, built bad, does not recognize every keystroke depending on how fast you type and you're having to constantly correct words, well, that's going to be a terrible experience. Also, if you've built this intense gaming machine or just a beautiful beast of a machine for coding or development, you want something that matches it. And of course, nothing is faster or as fast as something that has RGB. That's a complete lie. Uh, RGB does nothing for us in speed, but it can look pretty. And I think DOS Keyboard here has actually found a very unique solution here to making a keyboard a little more exciting. Now, filming a keyboard is really difficult because you have a situation where you kind of have to keep it dark and the cameras, at least with my junkie equipment for recording, can't quite pick up the keyboard uh, perfectly. So that's why we're showing the website here so you can actually see beautifully done pictures of the glow of the keyboard and RGB and those type of things. What we have here is the DOS Keyboard 5Q. Now, DOS has been making great, fantastic, professional keyboards for a very long time. I've had these keyboards in the past. I replaced one with a Corsair K70 mechanical keyboard, and I've been using that up to this point now that I have the 5Q. And what in made me interested in the 5Q is they weren't trying to redesign the keyboard. And if you look at DistroTube, he has this new keyboard he's checking out, which is kind of split the keys and it's kind of a new way of typing, but then you've got to get used to the new way of typing and you've got to figure all that stuff out. And then if you switch to a laptop, you kind of got to switch back to your traditional form. And while all the keys kind of and, and laptops and things can be a little bit offset, for the most part, you can within a few seconds get familiar with the standard keyboard. So I like that they kept it standard here, but give me something unique and that is really the DOS Keyboard Q software here that allows me to customize these keys in Linux because they have an open source API for their applets. I love any company that supports the Tux so therefore they get the bucks and so I can customize each key within Linux for certain programs which we'll get into more in depth in a moment. But for instance, right up here is weather app that's initiated on top of the keyboard, which is something really unique. I've not seen in other keyboards where you can overlay apps into your keyboard. So now it becomes a smart keyboard that actually I can look down at the color that's changed here. And it's not just because I set that key yellow, but it's actually telling me that it's sunny outside right now. And because of being a geek, I don't want to go outside because that place is scary and there's people and dirt and things. I'm joking. Um, but I can basically, since I spend a lot of time indoors, I can look at this keyboard and instantly know the weather. I can look at the keyboard and know if I have an email. If you utilize Gmail, I can know if my stocks have gone up. You can see in some of the demos on this screen here, some of the different use cases. And they're basically taking these apps and overlaying them over certain keys so that they can see the functionality or, or take the functionality of the app and be able to get notified of what's going on. So the other thing is this Q key here. Now this also is a volume control. You can't see it, but as I'm moving this, the volume's uh, coming up over on my screen telling me it's lowering or hiring. You can see the icon down here at the bottom of my screen changing uh, as I'm changing the volume here, uh, moving this little scroll wheel, but it also works as a button. So if I click that button and hit F2, which is the key I have for my weather, look at that. It's going to actually pull up the app to show me what the weather is in my particular area. And that's pretty cool. So now if you take this and you start thinking about GitHub implementations and because it's open source, other apps that you could write against this, we have a really cool, unique solution to this keyboard. 
So now let's take a look at the software in depth within Linux and see some of the things that we can do. Okay, so now we're in the app itself and there's a really cool program called Alien that allowed me to take this deb file and convert it to RPM, which I'm gonna be doing a whole video on that because apparently all of you experienced Linux users have been out there for a while like, oh yeah, Alien, I've known about it forever, but nobody thought to tell me. So I've just learned about Alien. It's so awesome because you could take deb files and convert them to RPM with basically a couple clicks of a button. And that's how I have the RPM available here. Now there is an RPM package that DOS Keyboard has released that is a community made package, but it did not work. So they really, at least for me in OpenSUSE, so they really need to um, maybe utilize Alien themselves and just convert it and put that package up there because the Alien version of the RPM just converting the dev worked perfectly. But this is the app. So this is native in Linux here, this application. And you can see that I've applied the weather to these three keys here, this application weather. And I have these other applications if I want to see GPU usage and get color coding based on the my usage for my GPU, how much memory is being used, I can apply that. If I want game deals, GitHub, Gmail, H2O reminders, all of these different RAM usage, Stack Overflow, Teamwork, Trello, Twitch, Workout, Zen, Monday.com. I can apply all of these here. And of course you can create your own applets. Additionally, we have the ability to customize our color. So you see, I created my own DOS Geek version, which has a lot of green. I know that's shocking, but for the gaming keys that I use, I have WASD here uh, set up so that it's easy for me to just look down and get my key, my um, fingers situated there. It was just something I was playing with. They have all these presets that I didn't create that come with the keyboard like League of Legends where it highlights again certain keys that you may utilize in that game. A Longhorn, which is pure orange. Photoshop, again, probably highlighting macro keys and things. And then I created a Vim where I took different categories of navigation and color coded them or removing words. Um, you know, and color coded them in the families, and I have not completed this yet, but color coded them in the families of different tasks that you would do within Vim. So I wanted to do this just to give you the, show you the idea that you can go in here and basically if you're learning Vim or you've learned Vim, but sometimes forget some of the keyboard shortcuts, you could color code things to the specific family of commands on your keyboard to make it easier for you to remember. You could customize everything from the pipe lighting that comes out on the side here, which is absolutely beautiful and very bright. We also have multiple bright settings. I think there's up to seven, that's off. So we got one, two, and I know you can't see this very well, but three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, Near, nearly 10 or 11 brightness settings here to um, decide how bright you want your RGB keys to be, uh, which is very, very useful as well. And as I switch these, you can see my keyboard automatically changes colors uh, the second that I click them. And then I can go in here and I can customize and set colors to blink, color cycle, breathe, anything that I want there, uh, which is very, very unique. So I can also select applications for this profile. So it can automatically use this profile based on a foreground running application. This is pretty cool. So automatic profile switcher. If I have a specific program and I want it to change with the program that I open, I could select that program, say the terminal and my keyboard as soon as the terminal is open is going to switch into that Vim profile. All right, so we have selected console and user bin. Let's go back to our DOS geek profile here. Everything's turned green, great. Now I'm gonna open console and see what happens. If this works correctly, it should automatically switch to my Vim profile. Let's find out. And it did. If you could see the keyboard here, uh, it doesn't show it over here because this is my main profile, but you could see switcher running and it has switched my keys to the Vim key shortcuts. You can see the HJKL here for navigation are highlighted. These are have changed here. Uh, just by opening that application. If we close it, I wonder if it automatically, and it does, you can see it's automatically going back to my main DOS Geek uh, profile. So that is super cool that you can set by application. I learned this just now using this keyboard 
um, that you can do that. That is super, super useful and neat that you can set it per application for your keys to change based on the application you launch. Very awesome uh, of them to add that. And again, we've got our applets here that we can just go in and install. Some of these will work for Linux, some of them won't. Um, it just depends, like for instance, some of the RAM usage and GPU usage stuff um, is probably looking for more of Windows-based profiles at the moment. Uh, although because it's open source API, you know, anybody can go in there and write one for their specific hardware or take one of theirs and modify it and upload it for Linux. So I love anybody that supports Linux out of the box. This DOS keyboard is awesome from the software side. Let's talk about the physical keyboard itself for a moment. So the build quality for this keyboard is absolutely amazing. You get this beautiful aluminum top here. The, the keyboard itself is super hefty and heavy. It comes in at over three pounds. You have a magnetic, magnetically snap on keyboard uh, wrist pad here that's just fantastic. So you, instead of having to take plastic clips like you do on the Corsair K70 I was using before and try to snap those in, this just magnetically snaps so you can easily take it off or not. This is a nice silicone uh, material here for it so it feels very nice, although it does leave some fingerprints and smudges here that you don't get on this keyboard and that's because of the way that they've painted this a flat black so you really don't notice any smudges or things on the keyboard like you have with a lot of other keyboards, especially ones that have the glossy uh, plastic feel on them. So you get the Gamma Zulu um, keys here, switches, which are absolutely amazing. You get the RGB plus 45 times faster response with their key 0.4 milliseconds. You have the open API it comes with the keyboard, the palm rest, the keycap puller, and of course your documentation there. One thing I wish they would have added to this keyboard and some of their models have this is additional USB ports. Um, that would be very nice. The, I guess the good thing about not having the additional USB ports is it only takes up one port on the back of your computer, but I really like having extra USB ports on my keyboard to plug things in that I want to keep local to the keyboard itself. Um, you have your nice volume controls, play button, fast forward. Uh, of course, you don't have a Windows key, which makes it absolutely fantastic. They have a nice recording already of the key presses. This is showing really hitting the Q button and any of your applets to pull up the document itself there. Um, but they do have, see if we can find it, a sound recording of the keys as they're being pressed. So I don't have to record that myself. Here we go, play the soft tactile sound. So this is really nice because in my case, having a really, I like the feedback and response of a lot of cherry switches and things like that from a typing standpoint. I love that instant feedback you get with those keys. However, one of the problems with those kind of keys is uh, if you're recording or doing any videos or anything, it's often very disruptive to the actual recording because it will pick up in say the podcast like Destination Linux if I'm typing a message or adding in additional information to a document. So I need, I want that responsiveness, but I also want it to be relatively quiet. And this keyboard gives me that perfectly with these Gamma Zulu mechanical key switches. They still give me that nice tactile feedback, uh, but they also have a softness to the sound that um, allows me to be quiet when I need to be. Um, of course, we talked about the aluminum uh, top here, top panel for this, and the silicone wrist rest that is fantastic. DOS keyboard's been along for a long, around for a long time. Here are some of the specs with the gold cross point contacts on the keys themselves, the width, the height, and everything you get with this beautiful keyboard. Now it does come in at a very expensive $249. I do personally think as much as I like the keyboard, it's a tad overpriced for what you're getting. Um, it's not out of the realm of other keyboards that it's competing with. And frankly, it does a lot more than those other keyboards. So I get why they wanted to come in with a premium price. I got this used off eBay um, for I think around 89 to 100 bucks. 
and uh, I don't remember which, but it was somewhere in between that range. So I didn't pay anywhere near that for it. So you can pick them up on the market in really good condition for a lot less money um, if you want to play with it. And uh, But if you want a brand new one, prepare to spend some cash on it. I think this would be more fairly priced based on other pricing of keyboards. I'm not saying keyboards should cost this much in general, but based on other keyboards out there, this should be probably within the $150 to $180 range would be a much more fair price for this particular keyboard. Um, although if you spend the full amount for it, I don't think you're getting ripped off. Um, I, you know, you are getting something, like I said, that does a lot more than other keyboards out there. And certainly if you have specific applications that you use and want to switch those profiles with those applications, as you open them differently, this keyboard is going to add you add a lot of additional uh, functionality that your regular keyboards will not, or even your standard gaming keyboards do not have. So this was a Kickstarter uh, fund because on the box, it actually says funded by Kickstarter, 580% of their funding. So a lot of people wanted this and it is here. And I love that it supports Linux there, right there with us. So very cool keyboard. Let me know in the comments what you think about this. Will you be checking uh, to see if you can get your hands on one or what is your favorite keyboard that you like to use. Obviously, DOS Keyboard needs to sponsor this channel, DOS Geek, because, I mean, it's kind of like peanut butter and jelly. We're almost meant for each other, right? And as DOS Geek, how can I not have DOS Keyboard? It just has to be. It was meant to be. In any case, leave your comments below. And until next time, get out there and fill your brains. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to watch the video.